Samantha Yarwood, you could not speak at the conference because of health issues. How are you today? I'm feeling much better, thank you. Still not 100%, but I'm glad I can be here. And apologies, I didn't have a chance to be at the forum. From what I hear, it was a phenomenal forum. Our partners were really excited to be there serving coffee, and some other people I know who attended said it was a really great day. You are the Director of Marketing for Starbucks Switzerland and Austria. Can you tell us about your job history at Starbucks? Yes, I've been with Starbucks now for 10 years. Um, I started off my career in the Canadian business in human resources as um, a recruiter. And um, I was originally there on a temporary assignment for three weeks. And during the, my time there, I decided that I wanted to stay and find a way to stay. So I recruited myself into a position and um, have been with the company ever since. My time at Starbucks has been very, um, it's been amazing. I've had a lot of different opportunities and experiences and had I have had a chance to do a number of different positions and everything from finance to strategic planning um, to marketing which is the role that I'm in right now across a number of different bu business units from food service to licensing to consumer packaged goods and most recently as the director of marketing and communications in the Swiss Austrian market. And what, uh, what would you have been talking about in your speech on the Swiss New Marketing Forum? So what I wanted to touch on is the Starbucks experience and specifically what we're known for. In fact, um, as an organization, we're known as taking that experience from being ordinary into extraordinary. And what I wanted to highlight was um, what the Starbucks experience means, what a Starbucks moment of connection is, and then specifically how we relate to that in the Swiss-Austrian markets. Um, during the economic crisis in 2008-2009, the U.S. had to stop and take a really hard look at the business and what was working well and what wasn't. What we wanted to take from that is what were the lessons learned in the U.S. that we could apply to the Swiss-Austrian business and specifically around listening to our customers. Um, as an organization, we've grown very quickly. We've been very successful. It almost feels like anything we do turns to gold. Um, but we did reach a point where we almost became a little bit arrogant, where we assumed we knew what our customers were thinking and also what, we wanted, what they wanted, but we weren't necessarily checking in with them to see exactly what they wanted. So what we did in the U.S. many years ago is we implemented several programs to start listening to our customers to be able to change and affect the business and we've taken those learnings and we've now applied them in Switzerland and Austria. Is that your approach for, um, for customer experience management? Yeah, I'd say customer experience management isn't necessarily defined in Starbucks as a specific topic or a specific business function. It's throughout everything that we do. Um, and what that really means to us is how do we listen to our customers and how do we react to our customers' needs? So what we've done in Switzerland is we've implemented several things over the course of the past few years to be able to not only quantify what our customers' needs are, but to also engage with them on an ongoing basis. So some key things that we've put into place are on an annual basis we do some customer research if you backtrack to a few years ago, we were all sitting around tables talking to each other about where we needed to go with the business long term as well as short term, but we were also looking at our brand pillars and who we were as an organization and then saying to ourselves, well, is this really important to our customer? You know, we think it's important to us, but is it important to them? So we did some research um, to understand what our customers wanted from us, but then we also thought we don't want to just do it through asking customers and non-customers through um, specific methodologies. We want to do it in more of an informal method. So we've implemented what we call customer roundtables. We invite small groups of customers in to speak with us. It's very informal. There's no structure to it. It's just to talk to them, to hear how the business is performing, um, to hear what they're liking, what they aren't, and to also just kind of put our finger on their pulse to see that we are really in line with what their needs are. There's also a few other tools that we use. Um, Starbucks as an organization has something that no other brand or organization does, and that's passionate partners. When we say partners, we're talking about the employees. But those front-of-the-line partners are interacting with our customers on the daily basis and they know our customers better than we do. So we also invite them in to talk about different topics, to work on projects with us, to get their feedback and they really help us to not only develop new ideas but to also help us course correct if we're kind of off path. What are um, other the consequences uh, for Starbucks marketing and social media? Um, I think the biggest piece for us is by listening to our customers' needs is we need to be able to react to that. We also need to be able to deliver on it, but where it really impacts us most is through product, it's through experience, and it's also through um, sometimes changing the path that we're on or course correcting where we're at. What does one-on-one -on -one customer engagement mean? One-on-one -on -one customer engagement to me is about each individual person's moment 
connecting with the customer and really reacting to what that customer wants. As individuals, we all have specific things that we like. So for example, when I go into a store, um, regardless of where it is, whether it's a Starbucks or another company, is I want somebody who's engaging, who's talking to me, who's really building that personal interaction. Whereas I have some friends, for example, that they might want to be in a store and they might want to get in as, in as quickly as they can and out as quickly as they can. And one-on-one -on -one customer engagement is about delivering on that specific customer's expectations, but also providing them what we call an uplifting experience in their day. So that it's a positive interaction, so they leave feeling a little bit better. And potentially by them feeling better, they're going to create a more positive effect to the next person and create what we call a ripple effect. Can you explain the concept of uh, my Starbucks idea? Yes, so my Starbucks idea is exactly everything that we just talked about, is the idea behind it is to allow a forum for our customers as well as partners to provide us their ideas. Um, Starbucks as an organization is a brand that's been built on experience through our customers as well as our partners, but the company you know, has grown very quickly and there's a lot of love around the brand. And part of that is because the ideas don't just come from people sitting in an office, it comes from all of the people who are part of Starbucks, and that's anybody who's in our coffee shops or who's buying a Starbucks product. And my Starbucks idea is that forum where customers can post what's working, what isn't working, any innovative ideas that they have. Um, and there's a lot of good things that have come out of that. In Switzerland, we don't have the my Starbucks idea, but we've implemented similar processes so we can still capture that feedback and we can react to it.